Welcome to Progressive... Hey, he's back! Hey, welcome to Progressive D&D in our little corner of the D&D universe. Today we have something special for you. We're delving deep into the new Unearth Arcana 8 Bastions. It's all about making your mark in the world, building strongholds, and crafting epic adventures. Let's get right into it. So, what exactly is a Bastion? Well, a, a Bastion is a location that belongs to the player character. It's a home, a stronghold, and a place of power that the character nurtures and develops over the course of a campaign. Bastions offer a temporary refuge from the dangerous world of adventuring, and they provide opportunities for the character to craft magic items, conduct research, harvest poisons, build ships, and carry out a broad range of other activities. The best part? You don't have to choose between going on adventures and commanding a bastion. You can do both at once. Bastions come with special facilities that generate in-game benefits, and these facilities can also undertake projects while you're otherwise preoccupied. Now, let's take a closer look at some of the key features of Bastions. Firstly, it's up to the Dungeon Master to decide whether Bastions are available in a campaign. They're best suited to campaigns that allow characters to return to their Bastions during intervals when they're not actively adventuring. Bastions are intended to be havens for the characters who own them. Random events might test a Bastion from time to time, but a Bastion can be destroyed in only two ways, which we will discuss when we get to the fall of a Bastion. Most importantly, a bastion is designed to be a creative playground for a player and a shared storytelling space in the campaign. Now let's talk about how you can acquire your very own bastion. If bastions are allowed in the campaign you are playing in, characters acquire their bastions when they reach level 5. The DM and the players can decide together how these bastions come into being. A character might inherit or receive a parcel of land on which to build their bastion or they might take a pre-existing structure and refurbish it. However it is acquired, the Bastion is ready for use when the character reaches level 5. The shape, style, and function of the character's Bastion is up to the player to determine. Uh, it can be a tower, a shrine, a fortified keep, or even a guild hall. Multiple characters can even combine their Bastions to form a single large structure. Every Bastion contains basic and special facilities. Basic facilities include bedrooms, courtyards, dining rooms, and such. A character can add basic facilities to their Bastion at any time by spending money and time depending on the facility. Let's now talk about a couple of crucial aspects of Bastions. Bastion turns and Bastion points. Bastion turns occur every seven days of in-game time giving characters regular opportunities to issue orders to their bastions and reap the benefits of doing so. Uh, these turns can be tailor fit to a campaign's pacing, ranging from every week to every month, totally depending on the DM's discretion. Now, during the bastion turn, a character can issue orders to the special facilities in their bastion, and that's where bastion points come in. Bastion points are a concept reflecting the benefits characters accumulate when their bastions are operating. Characters can use these points to acquire magic items, among other things. Each time a character gains a level, they can spend their bastion points to acquire a single magic item. The cost of the item is based on its rarity, as shown in the spending bastion points table you see right here. But that's not all. Bastion points have other uses too. Characters can spend them to ensure that word of their heroic deed spreads, granting them advantages on charisma checks, and in dire situations, they can even spend Bastion points to return to life in their Bastion at the next dawn. Yes, D&D now has respawn locations. <laughs> bastion points are your key to maintaining, expanding, and enhancing your Bastion. Uh, they are a valuable resource, so make sure to issue orders wisely to ensure the growth and prosperity of your Bastion. And don't forget, you get to design your Bastion's layout configuring the squares of each facility you see fit. Uh, each facility can range from cramped to roomy and even to vast as shown in this chart right here. 
Your characters can also issue special orders known as Bastion Orders to their Bastion Special Facilities. But remember, you don't have to issue orders to every special facility in your Bastion during a single Bastion turn. The Maintain Order is a bit unique. It's issued to the entire Bastion and focuses on maintaining the Bastion's functions. If you're not in your Bastion during a Bastion turn, it automatically acts as though you've issued the Maintain Order. Each time you issue a Bastion order, you gain a number of Bastion points, which is crucial for the operation and growth of your Bastion. Let's look at these orders one by one. First we have Craft. This order sets your hirelings to work on crafting an item suitable for that facility. Uh, you can also do the work yourself, however, it'll be paused when you leave the Bastion. Then we have Empower. The facility grants a temporary empowerment to either your character or someone else within your Bastion. This order can bring forth new found abilities. Uh, we will discuss more about this when we talk about the special facilities. Next, Harvest. You will use this order to produce a resource in the facility. Your hirelings will gather it for you. Again, you can do the gathering yourself, but as of crafting, it will pause when you leave the Bastion. Uh, as I mentioned, you can order the Bastion to maintain, uh, when you issue this order, all hirelings in your Bastion focus on its maintenance instead of carrying out specific orders in special facilities. It's a sacrifice that rewards you with Bastion points, but it also introduces the Bastion event. We will discuss that at the end of the video. You can also recruit. This order allows your hirelings to recruit creatures to bolster your Bastion's defenses and capabilities. Uh, do you want to learn some long forgotten knowledge? Try the research order. Hirelings in the special facility gather information or you can do the research yourself. But again, similar to crafting and harvesting, it pauses when you leave the bastion. Finally, we have the trade order. This order lets your hirelings engage in buying and selling goods or services stored or produced within the special facility. Bastion orders are the lifeblood of your bastion's success. So use them wisely and unlock the full potential of your magical stronghold. Moving on, let's explore the different special facilities you can have in your Bastion. You could have an arcane study, a garden, a smithy, a menagerie, or even a demiplane. It all depends on your character's preferences and abilities. Special facilities come with hirelings who assist in maintaining the facility, generating Bastion points, and executing the player's orders. These facilities offer various benefits from empowering characters to recruiting creatures, conducting research, and more. Each special facility can have its own prerequisite, although many have none, uh, and, and they come with unique orders that can be issued to them. Also, the special facilities become available at specific levels, those being 5th, 9th, 13th, and 17th, and the maximum number of special facilities you can have is 6, as you can see right here. Let's go ahead and break down these special facilities by the level they become available, starting with fifth level. First up, we have the Arcane Study. To unlock this facility, you'll need the ability to use an Arcane Focus as a spell casting focus. It's a place of quiet research, complete with desks and bookshelves. The Arcane Study offers two intriguing options when you issue the Craft Order. First, you can craft an Arcane Focus. You commission the facility's hireling to craft an Arcane Focus, taking seven days and no money. <laughs> you can claim it later, or you can sell it for 10 gold pieces. Or you can order the hireling to craft a book. It takes seven days for this as well and costs 10 gold pieces. You can claim it or sell it for 25 gold pieces. Moving on to the armory, this facility houses armor, shields, weapons, and ammunition. It's perfect for the Bastion Defenders. When you issue a trade order, the hireling stocks the armory, costing you gold pieces. Interestingly, when your armory is stocked, your Bastion Defenders become tougher to kill during Bastion events. The barracks provide sleeping quarters for Bastion Defenders. When you issue the recruit order, you can recruit up to four Bastion Defenders to your Bastion. Keep track of their numbers and hey, give them unique names and personalities for some added flavor. 
Next, we have a garden where you can grow decorative flowers, delicious mushrooms, rare herbs, or even deadly poisons. Want to switch things up? No problem. Just give that hireling 21 days. Let's talk about the harvest order. When you issue this order, your hireling collects valuable items from the garden as noted in the garden harvest table. Depending on your garden's type, you can get exquisite floral bouquets, perfume, mushrooms and vegetables, herbs for a potion of healing, or plants for antitoxin and poison. And the best part? It costs you nothing. And if you want to take your garden to the next level, you can enlarge it to a vast garden by spending 2,000 gold pieces. A vast garden is the equivalent to two roomy gardens and can include two of the same type or two different types. Plus, it gains an additional hireling. There's also a library offering research opportunities to uncover hidden knowledge. With one hireling at your disposal, you can issue the research order to the library. This order allows you to embark on a journey of discovery as you commission your hireling to research a topic of your choice, or you can delve into the research yourself. The topics you can explore are diverse and include legends, known events or locations, significant individuals, uh, types of creatures, or famous objects. Now here's the exciting part. The research takes seven days, but upon its completion, you gain access to up to three pieces of accurate information about the chosen topic that were previously unknown to you. The sanctuary is a peaceful place for worship or spiritual practice. With the ability to use a holy symbol or druidic focus as a spellcasting focus, this facility is perfect for divine casters. The sanctuary allows you to cast healing word without expending a spell slot. After a long rest in your bastion, you can use this feature once within the next seven days. The spell's level is half your level, rounded down. Additionally, the sanctuary provides a crafting option. You can commission your hireling to craft a druidic focus or holy symbol, taking seven days and costing nothing. You can keep it in your bastion or sell it for five gold pieces. We have the smithy designed for those who appreciate the art of craftsmanship to access this facility, you'll need either the fighting style feature or unarmored defense feature. It offers ample space and comes with two dedicated hirelings. The smithy is fully equipped with a forge and anvil and all the necessary tools for crafting weapons and tools. When you issue the craft order, you have three intriguing options. One, craft ammunition or a simple weapon. You commission up to 20 pieces of ammunition or one simple weapon costing half the normal price. Or opt for a masterwork simple weapon, which can later become a plus one weapon with the magic weapon spell. Two, craft armor or equipment. A hireling can craft various equipment, including armor, caltrips, chains, and more. The crafting time is seven days and costs you half the item's normal price. Three, Craft a martial weapon. A hireling will create martial weapons or masterwork versions with unique properties. The crafting time varies, and the masterwork option is also capable of becoming a plus one weapon with the magic weapon spell. Uh, let's talk about the storehouse. This one doesn't have any prerequisites, making it accessible to many characters. Uh, the storehouse allows you to produce or sell non-magical items with a total value of 500 gold pieces or less. As a bonus, buyers pay you 10% more than the standard price, which increases as your character levels up. Finally, for fifth level, we have the workshop. By spending a short rest in the workshop, you gain heroic advantage, which can be a game changer. Plus, you can craft various useful items using this facility. So that's some pretty awesome perks you're getting at just fifth level. Well, hang on because we are now moving to what you get at ninth level. Let's talk about the gaming hall. It's not just a place to play cards and roll dice. No, my friends, this facility offers much more than meets the eye. The gaming hall is a vast space, perfect for a multitude of recreational activities. It's equipped with everything from chess boards and darts and card games and dice. Picture a grand hall filled with laughter and camaraderie where adventurers can take a break from their quest and enjoy some downtime. But here's the twist. When you issue the trade order to this facility, 
you commission the gaming hall's hirelings to transform it into a full-fledged gambling den for a thrilling seven days. And on the seventh day, it's time to roll the dice once more. Yes, adventurers, it's time to consult the gambling den winnings table. Roll those percentile dice and determine your portion of the house's winnings. Will you strike it rich or will the fates be less kind? The table offers a range of winnings from a modest 3d6 gold pieces to a jaw-dropping 10d6 times 10 gold pieces. The outcome is in the hands of the dice gods. <laughs> then there's the greenhouse, a roomy space where magical fruits grow, offering benefits like lesser restoration. You can also craft potions and poisons here. And don't forget the laboratory, where you can craft various concoctions from potent poisons to magic potions. Let's explore the Secricity. This room serves as a preparation and storage area for the sacred items and vestments of your religion, and is perfect for spellcasters who can use a holy symbol or a druidic focus as a spellcasting focus. Having a Secricity allows you to regain one expended spell slot of level 5 or lower after spending an entire short rest in your bastion. This is an excellent way to replenish your magical power during your adventures. With the craft order for your Secricity, you have two options. First, you can commission a hireling to craft holy water, which can deal extra damage if you're willing to invest some gold into it. Second, you can have them create a temporary magic item with properties that last for seven days. Choosing from a list of powerful items like the Pearl of Power, Periap of Wound Closure, and more. Then there's the Scriptorium. This bastion facility contains desks and writing supplies, making it ideal for scholars and those who seek knowledge. With the craft order, you have several options. You can commission a hireling to craft a book replica, create paperwork like brochures and pamphlets, or craft a magical scroll. The scroll crafting has various rarity levels and costs associated with it. Moving on to the stable, a facility perfect for those with a penchant for mounts. The best part, no prerequisites are needed. This spacious facility can house riding horses, ponies, mules, and other creatures. After spending at least 14 days in the stable, your beasts become easier to handle, granting you advantage on wisdom animal handling checks. You can also issue a trade order to buy or sell mounts at normal cost, earning a profit when selling. As your bastion grows, you can even enlarge the stable to accommodate more large animals. Behold the Teleportation Circle, a facility that can transport you and your guests quickly. No prerequisites are needed, and it offers ample space. By issuing the Recruit Order, you can invite friendly mages or an Archmage at level 17 via your permanent Teleportation Circle. Guests stay for seven days and can cast specific spells for you provided you cover the material component cost. Our next facility is a theater, a facility perfect for those who love the spotlight. <laughs> no prerequisites needed, but it comes with a vast space and four hirelings. By issuing the Empower Order, your hirelings can put on a theatrical production or concert. As a character, you can contribute as a composer, writer, a conductor, director, or a performer. Successful contributions grant you theater dice, which you can use to boost your abilities. Next up is the training area. To access it, you'll need expertise in a skill, the fighting style feature, or the unarmored defense feature. It offers vast space and comes with four hirelings. By issuing the Empower Order, your hirelings will conduct training exercises, providing various benefits depending on the trainer present in the facility. Choose your trainer wisely to enhance your abilities. Speaking of trainers, here's a quick overview of the types of trainers available in the training area. You have the Battle Expert, who offers damage reduction for unarmed strikes or weapons. The Skills Expert, who grants proficiency in a chosen skill. There is a Tools Expert, who will grant proficiency with musical instruments or tools. The Unarmed Combat Expert, who can enhance unarmed strikes with extra damage. And the weapon expert who will grant proficiency with a chosen simple or martial weapon. Now let's venture into the trophy room, a facility that requires no prerequisites. This room is perfect for housing mementos, trinkets, and trophies. By issuing the research order, 
you can either research lore or seek out a trinket trophy with a magical property. The research can provide valuable information, while a trinket trophy may grant you the ability to cast specific spells. Now let's move on up to level 13 special facilities. First, we have the archive. This repository contains valuable books, scrolls, and maps, often hidden behind locked or secret doors. Your archive includes one rare reference book, granting you a specific advantage. Choose wisely from options like Bigby's Handy Arcana Codex or Material Musings of the Nature of Worldly Things. When you issue the research order, the hireling searches the archive for helpful lore. After seven days, they gain the knowledge equivalent to casting the legend lore spell, which they share with you. The meditation chamber is a calming space designed to help you align your mind, body, and spirit. When you empower the meditation chamber, your Bastion's hirelings can use it to gain inner peace, allowing you to issue another order on the same Bastion turn. But that's not all. The meditation chamber also provides the incredible benefit of fortify self. By meditating for seven days within the chamber, you can fortify your mind, body, and spirit, granting advantage on two random saving throws from the fortified saves table. This adds an exciting layer of depth to your character's development. Next up is the menagerie, a vast space where you can house various creatures. These creatures count as bastion defenders, protecting your bastion. You can even choose not to count them as defenders and let them act according to their nature. When you recruit creatures to your menagerie, you can select from a variety of options such as apes, bears, hyenas, and even the fearsome owlbear. <laughs> the cost depends on their challenge rating and you can even add other creatures at your DM's discretion as long as they're beast or approved monstrosities. Our next bastion facility is the observatory, a roomy space situated atop your bastion containing a powerful telescope. It allows you to explore the mysteries of the stars and even cast spells like contact other plane without using a spell slot. And don't forget the empower order, which lets you explore the stars for seven consecutive nights, potentially granting you supernatural charms like dark vision or heroism a fantastic addition for those interested in the arcane. Now, let's move on to the pub, a roomy space where you can socialize and gather information. The bartender maintains a network of spies, providing invaluable insights into nearby events and creatures. With the research order, you can commission the bartender to gather information from spies, helping you locate familiar creatures within a 50 mile radius. Additionally, the pub has a magical beverage on tap with options like Bigby's Burden and Kiss of the Spider Queen, offering various magical effects. Our final 13th level Bastion facility is the Reliquary, a cramped vault holding sacred objects that reinforce your religion. It allows you to cast greater restoration without expending a spell slot. The Harvest Order lets you create a talisman with religious significance, which can be used as a spellcasting focus. This unique item can bypass material components and spells, making it an essential addition for divine casters. And now, once our seasoned adventurers come limping home after slaying that beholder and finally advancing to level 17, brace yourselves for the incredible Demiplane facility, a space of mysterious power. Yes, with a shadowy door that can appear anywhere in your bastion, you can access this extra-dimensional realm. Inside, you gain temporary hit points that are equal to five times your level after spending a long rest in the demiplane, and you can even fabricate non-magical objects with a magical action. And the demiplane facility is scry-proof. Next, we have the guild hall, which allows you to lead your very own guild with options ranging from an adventurer's guild to a thieves guild. Recruit members and send them out on exciting requests. Then we have the Sanctum, a facility that provides solace and healing to its users. To access this sanctuary, you'll need the ability to use a holy symbol or druidic focus as a spellcasting focus, but trust me, it's well worth it. 
when you issue the Empower Order to the Sanctum, you inspire its four hirelings to perform daily rites that benefit you or another player character of your choice. The result? Temporary hit points equal to your level every time the beneficiary finishes a long rest, lasting for a whole week. And that's not all. The Sanctum also grants you the power to cast Heal once within the next seven days after spending a long rest in the Bastion. Plus, with Sanctum Recall, when you cast Word of Recall, you can make your Sanctum the destination and a chosen creature that arrives gains the benefit of the Heal spell. It's like having a healing oasis right at your fingertips. And finally, behold the War Room, a vital facility for strategic planning and military actions. It's a place where you plan and execute military actions alongside a circle of loyal lieutenants, battle-hardened veterans who share your alignment. To access this facility, you must have a fighting style feature or the unarmored defense feature. You start with two lieutenants and together you form an inner circle of strategic brilliance. But that's not all. The war room is adorned with war memorabilia and boasts a large table surrounded by chairs for you and your lieutenants. It's the perfect place to strategize and plan your next move. When you issue the recruit order to this facility, you have two intriguing options. First, you can recruit lieutenants. You can gain up to 10 lieutenants each with their own unique names and personalities if you wish. Uh, these battle-hardened leaders don't count as Bastion defenders, but they play a crucial role in your Bastion's defenses. Or you can recruit soldiers. You can commission your lieutenants to assemble a small army consisting of up to 100 guards or 20 mounted riding horses. This formidable force can be used for various purposes, but remember, it comes at a cost of one gold piece per day to feed each guard and horse. Your army is a force to be reckoned with, but it must be led by you or one of your lieutenants. They disband immediately if left without leadership for a day or if they go unfed. Otherwise, they remain under your command until they are destroyed or you choose to disband them. The war room is where your bastion's military might is born and bred. Whether you assemble a council of lieutenants or muster a formidable army, your strategic choices will shape the destiny of your bastion. So, those are the special facilities. <laughs> it took us a little while to get through them all, but they are such an integral part of your bastion, I thought it was important to give them the time they deserve. But hang in there with me for just a little bit longer because it is now time for us to talk about something crucial, the fall of a bastion. Do you remember I mentioned that there are two ways a bastion can be destroyed? First, if a character issues no orders to their bastion for a number of consecutive bastion turns equal to the character's level, usually because they're dead or stuck in some foreign land, the hirelings will abandon the bastion and it might eventually be looted. However, the character can always choose to start a new bastion, even among the ruins of the old one. Alternatively, a character can willingly give up their bastion at any time, releasing the hirelings and abandoning the location. This vacated bastion will quickly fall into disrepair, possibly even being looted or destroyed. The character can then start a new bastion elsewhere. But don't worry, starting anew is always an option. In either case, you can work with your dungeon master to establish a brand new bastion and determine how it comes into being. You'll also use the special facility acquisition table to figure out how many special facilities come with your new bastion. And guess what? It starts with two basic facilities of your choice. The special facility acquisition table will help you customize your bastion to your liking. You never know what surprises await in your new stronghold. Now let's talk about Bastion events. These are the moments that can spice up your Bastion life and create exciting story opportunities. Bastion events occur at the end of any Bastion turn in which a character issues the maintain order or the player does not give an order for a turn, thus having the maintain order automatically trigger. These events can be opportunities for the players to take on the role of the Bastion's hirelings and role play their actions. Here's where we use the Bastion Events table. 
It's a D20 table and it could lead to various outcomes. Let's break down a few examples. First we have nothing significant happens. Sometimes your bastion just runs smoothly. But then there's the attack event. Hostile forces might target your bastion resulting in a battle. Bastion defenders might be lost and the facilities could be damaged. On the flip side, you might receive friendly visitors who need to use your special facilities, offering you a nice chunk of gold in return. Or an honored guest could grace your bastion with their presence, offering unique benefits. How about a criminal hireling? Uh, they could attract trouble and you might need to pay a bribe to keep them out of custody. Or an extraordinary opportunity drops into your lap and allows you to gain extra bastion points by investing in various endeavors. Uh, you might lose some hirelings due to unforeseen circumstances. Or you might stumble upon a magical discovery, granting you a temporary magic item with unique properties. Maybe refugees are seeking shelter in your bastion, offering payment for your hospitality. And if you're feeling heroic, you can respond to a request for aid to solve local problems, but be prepared for some challenges. And there you have it. If you want all the juicy details, there is a link in the video description to the Unearth Arcana 8 document. If you try it out and the feedback option is still available when you watch this video, be sure and provide your thoughts. That way we keep influencing the course of Dungeons and Dragons and make it the game we want to play. So how about it? Will you build your own bastion and face the challenges it brings? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe for more D&D content. Until next time, may all your roles be natural 20s. <laughs> Thank you for watching.